I'm on the chapter 19 PowerPoint. I'm starting at slide number 21. We have been discussing uh, the Gibbs free energy. And we're going to remember that as delta G, the change in the Gibbs energy for a system. Uh, that is going to be spontaneous if delta G is negative, And it's going to be positive if the process is non-spontaneous. We know that we can look up values for delta G using Appendix L in our textbook. We can also use values for uh, the heats of formation and the entropies of various substances to figure out what delta G is going to be based on the equation. Delta G is delta H minus T delta S. And everything that we've been discussing so far is under standard conditions. So I'm going to put a little uh, circle up here to indicate that everything we've been talking about is standard conditions. Well, what are standard conditions? Standard conditions are 298 Kelvin temperature and a pressure of one bar, which is pretty close to one atmosphere, and it's also one molar concentration of all reactants and products. And this pressure also refers to one bar pressure of all reactants and products. So these are very specific conditions that I've been talking about. And clearly, this isn't always the conditions under which an experiment's run. I mean, maybe the temperature is going to be close to, you know, the freezing point of water, which would be 273 Kelvin. Maybe it'll be on the surface of the sun, which would be, you know, 5700 Kelvin. So obviously, all this can vary. So we need a way that we can figure out what delta G is going to be under non-standard conditions. And this is the equation that's shown on this particular slide, the delta G for a reaction under whatever conditions we need to understand it at is going to be found by taking the standard delta G and then adding to that RT times the natural log of Q. You might remember what Q is from the, uh, the equilibrium chapter. This is just the uh, ratio of concentrations of reactants and products for a particular reaction. Now, in this case, R is going to be 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin. This is the units of R that you're going to need to use. Uh, you know, you might remember the gas constant R, 0.0821 whoop, liter atmosphere per mole per Kelvin. Uh, this I like to call the, the gas, um, not the gas, the chemistry, I should say, maybe. The chemistry R, this is the physics R. We're going to end up using this one when we use this particular equation. And just to remind you what Q is again, let's say I have this particular reaction. Let's just take two waters in the gas phase going to 2H2 in the gas phase and O2 in the gas phase. Well, then Q for this particular reaction would be whatever the concentration of H2 is squared times the concentration of O2 divided by the concentration of H2O. It's gas. It's involved in the process. I'm going to square that. So for this particular reaction, I could find delta G of the reaction by finding the standard delta G, whatever that happens to be, and I'd add RT times the natural log of Q, which would be found by this right here. And I would just plug in the values of hydrogen, gas, oxygen gas, and water, gaseous water, to find out what the delta G for the reaction under those particular conditions would be. All right, we're now going to use this newfound equation to try to find the delta G for the reaction. Uh, two gaseous water molecules going to two gaseous hydrogen molecules and one gaseous oxygen molecule at 2323 Kelvin a pressure of water at about 0.1 bar, a pressure of hydrogen at uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 6th bar, and a pressure, pressure of oxygen at 0.21 bar. So this is clearly not at standard conditions because the pressures are not all 1 bar. They're off that. And our temperature is not 298 Kelvin. And you might think this is like a crazy example 
but I can show you something where this may be the case. So in a blowtorch flame, you know, a map gas blowtorch, which is what I, I just showed you there, the temperature, that's 23, 23 Kelvin. And you have to imagine that combustion is happening, so there's going to be some water produced, and that water that's produced is going to be in the flame. I'm guessing maybe a tenth of a bar. That may actually be a little too high, but I think that's, you know, an okay estimate. Well, there's not going to be much hydrogen around. Any of the hydrogen that's around would potentially be produced by this particular reaction. So we're going to set that really low. I can't set it to zero because, you know, the math won't work out. But but if, say, some's produced, it's, it's not going to be much, and we can, we can say that it's going to be a tiny amount. And this is just the pressure of oxygen in the atmosphere, which that's probably a reasonable assumption for how much um, oxygen is present in the flame. So let's see if this particular reaction uh, is spontaneous, perhaps, in that flame there. Okay, so to do this, I want to find the delta G for this reaction under non-standard conditions. Well, to find that, I first have to find the delta G for the reaction under standard conditions. And I'm going to have to add to that the physics gas constant times the temperature times the natural log of Q, which for this reaction is going to be the pressure, I know I've wrote concentration here, but we should see this is pressure of H2 squared times the pressure of O2 divided by the pressure of the gaseous water squared. So my first step will be to calculate the delta G under standard conditions. So I look these values up in the table in the back of the text. And let's see, I want to I wanna calculate uh, the standard delta G for this reaction. Oh, and the reaction, you might remember, is 2H2O going to 2H2 plus O2. So I want to find the Gibbs energy under the final conditions minus the Gibbs energy under the initial conditions. So what's that going to be equal to? Well, the delta G under final conditions, that's going to be these two over here. So I need to take 2 times the value for hydrogen, which is twice times 0. That's easy. And I need to add to that 1 times the value for oxygen, which is also 0. That's a pretty easy calculation. The whole thing goes to 0. So that's my, uh, excuse me, that's my final conditions. Now I want to subtract from that the, the uh, Gibbs free energy for the initial conditions, free energy of uh, formation. So I've got to go twice. I've got to subtract twice the value for water, minus 229. Let's see, this all goes to 0, and I'm going to add twice at 229. 2 times 229. So that's going to be a positive 458 kilojoules per mole. This reaction, water dissociating into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, it is not spontaneous. That's a positive delta G. It doesn't happen on its own. So I'm going to just take my cup of water here, and I'm going to check this out. Maybe I'll just leave it here as I'm going through some of the calculations. It's not, it's not decomposing into water and oxygen. That's because the delta G for this is positive. However, I couldn't get this to go if I add some energy. So I'm just going to take this battery, and I've added a little salt to the water so that it'll conduct. I'm just going to go ahead and add this to my water to show you that I can get this reaction to be spontaneous. Oh yeah, I see some bubbles forming over here on this electrode. Look at that, it's just going like crazy. So this reaction can be made to be spontaneous if I do something to it, but on its own, you know, I don't see any water here starting to bubble and, and form hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So in order to get that reaction to go, because delta G is negative, I have to add a little bit of of chemical energy to it to get it to go, and that chemical energy is being added from the battery. Well, that was kind of fun. But now we're also going to see if this reaction might be spontaneous under some non-standard conditions, the conditions we saw with a blowtorch. And we estimated what those conditions might be, and now let's, let's just do a calculation and find out if it might be reasonable to assume
that the water produced in the blowtorch might actually produce some hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Okay, so the delta G for the reaction under these conditions, that's going to be my standard delta G, which we calculated to be positive 458 kilojoules per mole. So let me write that in here. 458 kilojoules for every mole plus R, which is 8.314. That's joules per mole per Kelvin. Notice this kilojoules doesn't talk to this joules. We're going to need to multiply that by the Kelvin temperature. 2323 Kelvin times the natural log of the hydrogen pressure squared, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 6 squared, times the pressure of oxygen, 0.21, divided by the pressure of water, 0.1 squared. I've got everything in place to calculate this. Let's give it a shot. I'm going to start over here with this. Let's see. 1 times 10 to the negative 6, that's going to be 1 exponential 6, and I want to make that negative. Now I'm going to square it times 0.21. Now I'm going to divide that by 0.1 squared. So I'm going to divide by 0.1, and I'll divide by 0.1 again. That'll do the trick. So now I need to take the natural log of this value. And now I'm going to take this and multiply that by 2323. And I'll take this whole answer and multiply that by 8.314. Okay, so what I get? That big, let's divide by, okay, hold on. Let's see where I'm at here. So this Kelvin cancels this inverse Kelvin. The unit I have is joules per mole. Let's make it kilojoules per mole. So I'm going to divide by 1,000. Minus 475 kilojoules per mole. That was a lot. That was this whole part right here came out to this value right here. Well, let's see. Delta G is a positive 458 kilojoules per mole minus 475. So let's see. 458 minus 475. Hey, look at that. My delta G came out negative 17 kilojoules per mole. I mean, that's not huge, but it is negative. And that suggests that perhaps, under the conditions of a blowtorch flame, you might actually have the case where some of the water that's produced in the flame may actually dissociate into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Isn't that kind of interesting? A lot of assumptions made there, though, folks. Uh, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet on this or anything, but it is something that's interesting to think about.